So we're going to look at outliers and we have an example here with some data and the data below represents the results from a quiz that class A took. So here's our data here. What you'll notice is most of the students got between 0 and 4 marks out of 10 and then you got the student who got a perfect 10 out of 10. And you can see it better when you look at the dot plot. We can see all these students grouped together and then there's the student who's far away or separate from the other data. And anything that's far away or separate from the data is called an outlier. Now, I know we can see that this is an outlier, but we're going to learn how to calculate whether it's an outlier or not. And we're going to do it using one of these two methods. Both methods are actually very, very similar. They're just tackled in a different way. So what we'll do is we'll start with the first method. This is my favorite method, and, and I'll discuss the next method afterwards. Okay. Step one, they want you to calculate the interquartile range. So looking at our data, we need to start by finding the middle. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There are 20 students, so I know that this will be the middle. There's 10 numbers on each side of that. Um, that's actually called my median. And then I find the middle of the bottom half, which is here. This is called quartile 1. And the middle of the top half is here, quartile 3. Quartile 3 is 3.5, and quartile 1 is 2. Alright, so looking at step 1 in the first method, the interquartile range can be found by going quartile 3 minus quartile 1 or 3.5 minus 2. This gives us a value of 1.5. Then in step 2 it says take your interquartile range and multiply it by 1.5. So 1.5 times 1.5 and that gives us 2.25. Now this 2.25 is kind of like a magical number that we're going to use to check whether we have outliers. And the way we do it is we look on our dot plot and we mark our quartiles. So quartile 1 was the number 2, so this is quartile 1, and quartile 3 was the number 3.5. Okay. Next, we're going to go from our quartile and we're going to move 2.25 either to the left or the right. So from quartile 1, I'm going to move 2.25 movements to the left. And where's that going to land me on? That's going to land me on the number negative 0.25. And from quartile 3, when I move 2.25 to the right this time, that will land me on the number uh, 5.75 and I'm going to label this in red and these become our markers 5.75 and negative 0.25 and they mark that they these markers help us find outliers because anything outside these markers is an outlier now you'll notice that all the data is inside them except the 10 10 being the outlier. Okay. Um, by the way, that's what we just did in step three. We subtracted this number from Q1. We we went to the left and we added this number to, to Q3. All right. Um, so from this, we'll write a um, write a little conclusion. Therefore, 10 is an outlier. All right. Now I want to look at the second method here, which basically does the same thing, uh, except that you have to memorize a formula. So step one says the formula Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. So let's see what happens when we do this formula. Q1 is 2, so 2 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range of 1.5. And when you do that, you'll get negative 0.25, which you will notice is the same as our marker down here. When I look at the next formula in step 2, it's got Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR, which is the same as saying 3.5, which is what Q3 is, plus 1.5 times our interquartile range of 1.5, and this will give us 5.75. So these two formulas basically find your markers, and then from there you can find any outliers.